Good morning and welcome to the Thomas Congregation Church. Oh, I put the batteries in wrong. <laughs> Right now. So good morning once again. It's wonderful to have all of you here on a July 9th weekend. I can't imagine it. Isn't that funny? Well, here you are. It's wonderful to see you. But it is hard. Is it working now? Well, I'm just going to switch to you. Walking over here, it seems to be temperamental today. This is on, yes. It's temperamental today, so I will be here. This is hard because I can't move. <laughs> so after worship, I don't know if you've heard, we're going to have a little sing-along um, of July 4th hems in our red and black hymnal. So have some coffee and bring your voices and we will sing along um, those songs. And I also want to announce that in the back garden, we've been having yoga on Thursday mornings at nine o'clock with Betsy West, who is a certified yoga teacher. And it's very gentle yoga. And if you're over 65, you can get reimbursement from Medicare. Who knew? So you are invited to join us in the garden. Also, the week after next, I will be away for a few days on retreat in Connecticut with fellow clergy, and we will be um, attending a retreat with John Philip Newell, um, who I am told is very much like a holy man. So I look forward to meeting him. Also happening today, which probably none of you really know about, um, Lisa organized a youth reunion um, that will be happening at the Clements House. So all the youth that have grown up through the church in the last number of years are getting together, some of those in college, some of those in high school, and they will be bringing their parents and we'll all be having a picnic together. So that should be a lot of fun. And I'd like to invite Kara Lee to come up to tell us about the lobster um, dinners, what happened at this one and upcoming ones. Can you hear me in the back now? Thank you, Leslie. Um, first of all, thank you for everybody that participated or helped in any way. It was a huge success. Um, we will be repeating it again on July 14th. That's a week from this coming Friday. And there are sign-up sheets in the hall for people to sign different slots to help as they did the last one. Um, this for coming Friday, uh, they have North Falmouth Village has Unplugged Day, and that's at the library up by the baseball courts. And we are going to be having hot dogs there, compliments of North Falmouth Congregational Church. They said that they had like 300 and something people last year. We, we're not doing that many hot dogs because people have choices. But um, I could use some help with that. Uh, so if you can, please. And I want you to know that I did leave some tomato plants in the hallway, um, in the hall. And you're welcome to take them. You can take one if you only want one out of the pack and everything else. So that's it for that. And um, any other things that come up or anything you see in the calendar and you think you'd like to help, please do sign up or call me. I'll find a spot for you. Trust me. So let us take a deep breath, that Yahweh breath that I taught you last week, Yahweh, inhale and exhale. And let ourselves be grounded in this holy and sacred space as we are brought into the worship of God with the music.
morning. Join me in the call to worship. We are from North and South. We are from tiny apartments and expensive homes. We are from the city and from others far away. We are from stages of grief and stages of love. Summers and cold. We are from kitchens with passed down recipes. We are from the dust of the earth and the stars of the sky. Join us in the song of thanksgiving. Rejoice in the Lord always as your insert. Join me in the prayer, responsive prayer of confession. When people heard from Jesus was from Nazareth, they asked, can anything good come from Nazareth? Can anything good come from that side of town? From a school with poor test scores? From a criminal history? From opinions different than our own? From a history of addiction? From a faith with death? From a church with faults? Oh God, forgive us for the doubting you in our hope. Open our eyes to see your goodness at the expansive grace that is. Anything good come from there? Yes, always yes. Amen. Family of faith, if you ever asked yourself, can anything good come from this messy human life of mine? Remember this, God is whispering, yes. You were created in the image of God. Your story is one of goodness and love from the very beginning. So hear and believe the good news. God is here. God is at work among us. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our opening hymn number 394, In Christ There Is No East or West, and you are invited to rise in body or spirit as you are able. Please be seated. Good morning. I have, I need another hand. <laughs> I got it. Uh, um, 
So I, I think like this t particular topic that we're talking about today is something that's very close to my heart. So I think it's just really important that no matter what age we are, that we remember that every one of us was made on purpose. That there was infinite choices to create each of us. And these were the ones that were chosen on purpose. Nobody's mistake, nobody's a mistake. We're all created on purpose. And I think that Jesus, God, when he looks at all of us, just sees that, just sees those choices that were made on purpose and sees the beauty that all of that is. And, and those times when we can get down on ourselves and feel bad, I think it's important to remember that, that we aren't mistakes, that we were all made on purpose. I think kids are better at remembering that than we are sometimes. <laughs> um, and so when we look at Jesus welcoming his disciples, they were not by societal standards necessarily perfect people. And yet, but Jesus didn't see that. Jesus saw the beauty that they were because he knew that they were made on purpose, just like they were. And he invited them to come. And I think that he calls us as well to see others as being made on purpose, to see others as being beautiful, and look past maybe some of the judgments and things like that and just see that every person was made on purpose and he invited them to come just as they were and i think that that is important to remember that we are also called to welcome others into our lives and into our church just as they are and if you see if you look in your um order of worship today you'll see this page there's two pages in my hand but you will see this page that talks just about that, about um, what, it, what do you love about our life and our community, and would you be willing to invite someone to come and see what we have here? And if you would like to fill that out now, if you know what to say and you want to fill that out while you're sitting here, you can certainly do that, and you can put it right into the offering plate, or if you want to think about it, you can take it with you and bring it back another day. And also, <laughs> for my third hand, um, also, you'll see out in the, um, in the covenant room, these are on the tables in the covenant room. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and this is a, just for fun, it is a summer faith formation bingo. And we know how to play bingo, right? You want to get, three, these are only three, so three across, three down, or three diagonally. And there is different, there's different, each column is a different category. And today, I think we're really focusing on the community category and about reaching out to someone else, inviting them in, into our church, into our hearts, in friendship. And also, I'm noticing that this one right here says, look into church activities that need volunteers. <laughs> so here's who you can talk to <laughs> if you want to fill in that square right, right now. Um, but I'm going to post this on Facebook as well. So um, let me know if you get a bingo. And we will uh, put up a poster or something so that we can see how many bingos we get by the end of the summer. And this is for everyone, families, individuals, young and old can participate in everything that's on that sheet. So as we move forward from here today, always remember, all of us, all ages, that we were made on purpose and that everybody we see was also made on purpose. And that's the way God sees them. And that's the way we're called to see them as well.
Yes, you can clap. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis 2, 4 through 15. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to fill the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole faces of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Fishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Eliam and Ankh stone are there. The name of the second river is Gion. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Asira, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, till it and keep it. Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, 35 through 51, and it is on page 112 in your Pew Bible if you would like to follow along. Hear these holy words. The next day, John the Baptist again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi which translate, translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are called to be, you will, you are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Will you see greater things than these? And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm just going to try this one more time. See if I can get this going. Can you hear me? Oh, wait, got to step away from the other microphone. (laughs) 
Can you hear me? Yes. Let's see how this works. All right, can you still hear me? Great. Let us pray. Holy God, we don't always know how to pray, but you find us anyway. We don't know how to listen, but you are in our ears all the same. We don't always know how to believe, but you surround us with beauty and hold us together in love. Our lives are full of so many distractions and so much noise. Find us, hold us, and help us to hear in our hearts the word you have for us today. Amen. What was it about Jesus that caused so many people to be drawn to him, to believe in him, and to follow him? I imagine it was his holiness, his humility, his joy, his laughter, his gifts for telling stories that resonated and challenged, his gift for healing people and making them whole, his ability to look deep into a person's soul with just a gaze. With the eyes of God, he saw the sacred beauty within everyone. He was a holy magnet that drew people in. For example, in the beginning of our reading in John, John the Baptist points out to two of disciples that there goes the Lamb of God and Jesus, and they immediately, like moths to a light, they follow Jesus. Jesus had that immediate effect on people. People met Jesus and they were changed. Whatever their deepest need was, he met it. It didn't matter if they were a poor fisherman, a despised tax collector, a rich man who was a Pharisee, a Samaritan woman at the well who had a different faith, an untouchable leper, a thief who has crucified him, and a centurion who stood at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Jesus had a profound effect on people. Across the Gospels, Jesus meets men and women, rich and poor, rejected and accepted, powerful and vulnerable, people of different faiths and cultures, and people of different shades and varieties. And each one, in his own way to each one, he says, come and see. Come and see God do a new thing. Come and see God open up a new future for you. Come and see the grace of God made real for all people. A grace that doesn't discriminate, but affirms. For those who saw the possibility of hope in Jesus, they took up the invitation to follow their curiosity and see where it led them. Those three words, come and see, they're so spacious, aren't they? They're warm, they're inviting, they're hospitable. When I say, come and see, Joyce, just don't you sort of want to come along? And are you curious enough at that invitation? To come and see puts the decision in our own hands. There are no strings attached to that invitation, no expectations, and no judgments. It doesn't cram any belief system down our throats. It is an invitation that is filled with freedom to come and explore, to come and experience a grace-filled life that God can only give us. 
When have you gotten the invitation to come and see? Was it when someone invited you to come to a church, and maybe a new church, to see what God was doing in that particular community? Was it when someone you were, when you were young, invited you to a youth group to come and see what that was like? Was it when someone invited you to a small group Bible study or to a men's group within the church? Were you curious, like Andrew and Philip? Or were you more like Nathaniel, skeptical? I see a head nodding, yes, I'm more like Nathaniel. <laughs> While Jesus gives this invitation that some people take up, but not everyone, of course. Some are confused and puzzled, and some are even skeptical of Jesus' offer. Take Nathaniel, for instance. Jesus goes to Galilee and bids Philip to follow. Philip does, and he's so excited, he goes to Nathaniel and says, you, there's this man, he's the Messiah. And, and Nathaniel's like, can anything good come of Nazareth? And Philip just says, come and see. And in that question, though, can anything good come from Nazareth? He packs a whole lot of judgment into one question. Can anything good come from the wrong side of the tracks? Can anything good come from ex-cons? Can anything good come from a school with poor test scores? When have you made a passing comments like that, full of assumptions and judgment? If you never have, raise your hand. I don't see anybody raising their hands. That's good news. I know I have, and I'm not proud of it. Nonetheless, when we spout something like that, Jesus' invitation still stands. Come and see the world differently. Come and see so that you might understand God works through all things and all circumstances to bring goodness into the world. What I find remarkable in this text is Philip's response to Nathaniel. He doesn't get defensive. I would have. You know, if I said, you know, you've got to meet this guy, and someone said something like Nathaniel did, I'd get my back up. I would have felt insulted. What did you mean by that? What are, you, what are you saying? What are you really saying? Come on, I hear judgment in that. But Philip learned quickly from Jesus and he doesn't get defensive. He merely says, come and see. And so he does. And he couldn't have been more surprised by Jesus. Jesus looked passed his judgments, and gazed into a soul, and he saw an honesty and purity of thought and intention. Nathaniel's heart melted with wonder and joy just to be seen for who he really was. Jesus named the quality he wanted to bless and cultivated a would-be believer. We too are invited to come and see others as Jesus saw them. As commentator Deborah Thomas wonders, what would happen if we routinely saw others as Jesus saw them? If beneath the anger, we saw a passion for justice? If beneath the shyness, we saw a hunger for connection? If beneath the bossiness, we saw a capacity for great leadership. If beneath the loud mouth banter, 
we saw prophetic truth telling. If beneath the quietness, we saw a gift for meditative reflection. If beneath the recklessness, we saw courage. Do you hear all the judgments in those, in those questions and then turning it around to see what Jesus would see in that person? In Brian Stevenson's book, Just Mercy, which is about innocent black men on death row, he wrote, each of us is more than the worst thing we have ever done. In other words, each of us benefits from a second, a third, and a fourth look. To gaze in another's eyes with gentleness, compassion, and kindness is to see past the worst thing. Every time someone looks at us with the eyes of Jesus, it is a moment of grace. We know we've been seen, we know we are cared about. There is nothing lonelier than not being seen for who we really are. Deep down, underneath the defensive walls we build to fortify our fear. How can you not be drawn to God who sees you for who you really are? How can you not be drawn to a person who sees you for who you really are? Jesus invites you to come and see so that you might invite others to enter the holy joy of being seen and deeply known. In being seen, the very best that lies hidden within you is called out and called forth. When others show you who you really are in God's eyes, you start seeing others for who they really are. And through these grace-filled encounters, we are all changed. And when we are changed, we invite others to come and see for themselves. When you trust that you are seen and love for who you are, that is when you discover the capacity to see others with love and that God loves you and them equally. To be seen is truly to know God's joy and unfailing love. And if you don't believe me, well, come and see for yourself. Amen. <laughs> Let us join together in the unison affirmation of faith found in your order of worship. We believe that faith can come from doubt, that minds can be changed, that justice can begin with us, and that something good can come from Nazareth. We believe God shows up in the corners of our world so often ignored and denied. From this place of holy surprise, we believe God invites us forward, beckoning hope, bravery, and curiosity from each of us. Come and see, God says, we believe, amen. Let us join in our response of him, the summons. It is an insert in your order of worship. Please rise in body or spirit as you are able.
Please be seated. We come to our time of prayer, a time when after the pastoral prayer, we do the prayers for the people and you can say your prayer or joy or concern and all together we will say, oh Lord, hear our prayer. And for those of you on Facebook, you are invited to write your prayers in the comment section and those will be read aloud as well. So let's bring our hearts together in prayer. God of all, thank you for forming this body, this life, this world, and these people here today. Thank you for drawing us in, for holding us up, and for weaving us together, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. Today, we come to you in prayer with gratitude overflowing, gratitude for the places we've been, for the people who've shaped us, for the lessons learned and for the spaces we call home. But we also come to you with prayers on our hearts. We pray for our community and neighbors. We don't see them, but there are those who hunger for food, comfort and caring. There are those whose grief, pain or depression hovers too close. There are those who are lonely and lost and long to belong. There are overwhelmed parents who must choose between feeding their family and putting a roof over their heads. So scoop them all up, dear God, breathe new life into them, hold their hearts alongside their worries, relieve them of their burdens, protect them in the palm of your hand and draw them close. We pray for healing and strength for all those we lift in prayer this day whether we speak our joys and concerns out loud or in the silence of our hearts. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. 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 For all our church members who are in assisted living, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. God and community, holy and one, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And yes, we will sing that. <laughs>
friends, we are being invited to come and see the deeper life of faith. One way is to say yes, is by giving what we have, time, talent, and money. It is with gratitude we say yes to this invitation of faith together to receive our offerings. Let us join together in the unison prayer of thanksgiving in your order of worship. Giver of life, we bring you these gifts knowing that all human life is precious and belongs to you. We offer these gifts as a pledge of our love and loyalty to you and each other and all your beloved, especially those who hunger and thirst. We commit ourselves to serve as Jesus served and to walk in his way of truth, justice, and mercy. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our song of invitation for Holy Communion, number 347, Let Talents and Tongues Employ.
Jesus said to his disciples, come and see. Come and see that life is good. Come and see the grace and mercy that can be offered you. Come and see. He turned no one away from that invitation. It was for everyone. All were welcome to the table, no matter who they were. Come and see, Jesus said, even at this table. Forgiveness is found. Love is given. Welcome is extended. On that night, 2,000 years ago, they were celebrating the Passover feast. Jesus knew he would be betrayed. Jesus sat, Judas sat with him, but it didn't matter. Jesus extended him grace anyway, and they ate together. And at the end of the meal, he took the bread. He gave thanks to God and broke it and said to them, this is my body, take and eat. In like manner, he took the cup and raised it and gave God thanks for it and said, this is my blood poured forth for you, the new covenant poured out forgiveness. Do this and remember me. And so we come to this table to receive this grace. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, we come because we have been invited to this table. Bless what we do here in Jesus' name and share with each other his bread and cup. Help us to meet him in this communion, rejoicing in his affectionate company, not just alone, but all of us together, here and anywhere, now and forever. Amen. So we begin. The bread broken for us. The bread of life. The cup 
poured out for us. Cup of salvation. Let us give thanks for all that we have received. The prayer of thanksgiving can be found in your order of worship. Thank you, gracious God, for like in the spirit of Jesus, for the witness we cannot forget and the mission of justice you have made us your own. It's the gifts of the Holy Communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, and the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join our voices together for our closing hymn, number 172 in your black hymnal, Jesus Calls Over the Tumult. Thank mm -hmm. you.
May God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions, the vul vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak the truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love, and the awareness that the Holy Spirit is always beside you. Our worship has ended, but our service has begun. Go in peace. Join us for the sing-along. <laughs>